My rally tower is now ready and today you get to see it. In this video, I'm going to show you all the different components of this rally tower. And at the same time, I'm going to walk you through the process of assembling the rally tower onto the bike. And at the end, I'll tell you how you could get a tower just like this on your bike. So stay tuned. Hi and welcome to On Two Wheels. So today is a pretty big milestone on my rally build video. I'm actually ready to put it on the bike today. So if you haven't seen how this project has been coming along, uh, I'll add a link in the description with all the videos leading up to this moment. Um, so Devin and I have been going back and forth with a couple of designs and in the end we've finally come up with a working prototype. And it took quite some time to get to this point. So there were quite a few designs and concepts we wanted to try out. Ended up using some of them and some of them just didn't make the cut. So this build has been a very exciting project. We've easily spent well over 100 hours on just coming up with ideas, prototyping things, uh, seeing what works, working out the measurements and dimensions. It was a long process and had its ups and downs. And today I have a working prototype that's ready to go on the bike. So in this video, you're going to get a first person view of how this tower goes onto the bike. So without waiting any longer, let's get started. So today I'm going to start off with a new style of camera work. I'm going to use a GoPro and give you a first person view. So what I'm hoping to do is show you exactly what I see and give you that feeling that, well, you're part of the whole build. First, I'm taking a look at all the different components of the tower. So this may seem a bit overwhelming because there's quite a few parts, but there are some parts that we kind of designed and then decided we won't be using, but I've still left them over here just to give you an idea. So the main structure of the entire tower is two dimensional. So we've got basically two flat planes, which are going to be sitting parallel to each other. And these two planes are essentially going to be connected in the middle through stainless steel bolts and spaces to keep them in place. The two parts that are not in this picture are the frame brackets. That's because I've already put them on the bike just to make the job a little bit easier. To give a quick description of all the parts from top to bottom, at the very top are the main plates, right below them are the dashboard raising plates and just below those are the first version of the headlight mount and just below that is the second version of the headlight mount and on the side the triangle so those were the first version of the dashboard mount. So you'll notice that there's quite a few times that we have a version 1 and a version 2 that's because as we go on we keep refining and get better ideas and improve the design. And of course you see the lights at the top and at the top right corner you'll see the dashboard and between the brackets and my box of bolts you'll see a bunch of aluminium tubes. So this is actually a 10 millimeter aluminium tube I've cut into little spaces. So the spaces go between the main panels to keep everything nice and tight. So before I get started I'm going to take all the parts that I need and keep them close by so that I don't have to run around during the assembly. So this whole tower is made of aluminium. So the entire assembly is insanely light. In fact, the, when we measured it, it only increases the bike's weight by one kg. And these spaces are feather light. You could barely even weigh them. So I'm going to store them nice and neat just to make life a bit easier. So everything's ready now, let's get started. The first thing to go on is the right side main panel. So when we assemble the whole tower, we are gonna actually start by doing a side and then add the spaces and put the wiring between the two panels before we seal up the whole unit. So you'll notice that I'm putting the H4 connector in there. That's because I want to make sure the wiring goes between the panels and I'm plugging in my headlight so that I don't need to squeeze the wire in through the bracket later on. So once the wiring is done, I'm going to put the left hand side main panel. So you'll notice that I'm now using the spaces. So the spaces make sure that the two panels are parallel to each other. So we have multiple spaces and the spaces are actually pretty precise because we need to accommodate the thickness of the aluminium panels. So that also means that the bolts that we use are of varying lengths. So 
some of them happen to be 40 millimeters some happen to be 45 millimeter and at some points we go all the way up to 55 millimeter bolts So there was one aspect of the DIY project experience that I missed out on, walking down the aisles of Bunnings looking for bolts. Because Davin had gone through this process before me, he told me exactly which bolts I'll need. So I bought all the nuts, bolts and washers online and it ended up being cheaper even though it took a few days to get here. And getting that parcel of bolts in the mail was probably the highlight of my week. So by now I have the main structure on the bike, so that's the main plate, the dash mount as well as the light mount. So at this point I've only got the bolts finger tight so that uh, I can do any adjustments and once everything is on the bike I'll start tightening them up permanently. Now it's time for me to get the lights attached onto the tower. So this works with a two light system. So we've got a low beam light and a high beam light that comes over here. Wiring wise, it's a direct plug and play. I'm using the same H4 adapter that the DRZ has. So that means I'm not going to mess with and damage the bike's wire harness. So the lights I'm using here are two LED lights. If I remember right, one of them happens to be about 12 watts, whereas the other was about 15 watts. And uh, combined, they still consume a lot less energy than the stock headlight, which is a 55, 60 watt halogen bulb. And trust me, these are a lot brighter and go way, way further. And another benefit of using these bulbs is that I save up a lot of energy, which I can now use for other accessories. So, so I can charge my phone, I can have my heated grips, and it won't really overload the bike's charging system. And the fact that it's so compact makes the logistics a lot easier. And you don't want something too bulky that far ahead in your bike. Because if it's too wide, it could obstruct your view. So the lights have now been fitted and the wiring's done. I just need to tighten everything up before I put the dash plate on. So as I mentioned, this whole tower is made out of aluminium. But in this case, I chose to paint the tower in black. Davin preferred the brushed aluminium look while I wanted it to be black so that it matched the rest of my bike. So I used good old rattle cans to paint this tower but in the long run I don't think it's a very good idea because the paint doesn't hold very well onto the aluminium. So I think as a permanent solution I need to powder coat all these components. I'm now going to put on the dash plate. So here you can see how easily this, the paint on the aluminium comes off and I've actually repainted the scratch part but it's definitely not a look that I want to keep. So the dash plate is now on and now I can just move on to fit in the windshield. So the windshield itself is held by three sets of brackets. So two connected to the dash, two to the light bracket and two at the bottom board. So if you're wondering how I got the Suzuki S, the DRZ or even all the other fine lines and shapes, that's because this has been laser cut. When I started the project, my plan was to cut the shapes with a hacksaw or a jigsaw and sand it down with sandpaper. But once I started working with Davin, let's just say that my standards were also raised. Davin was really handy with his drawing skills and he refined quite a lot of my crude shapes and odd lines. So the main tower structure is now ready. Uh, the next step is going to be to put the windscreen on. So this windscreen was made out of polycarbonate. When making a windscreen, there's two options. You could go with polycarbonate or you could go with perspex. Perspex is also known as uh, acrylic. The reason polycarbonate is better is that it actually has a more flexible property to it. So you could actually flex it without it shattering. Whereas acrylic would shatter as soon as you start to bend it. 
and that's not ideal especially on a dirt bike where you could easily fall off or the vibrations could cause cracks so if you look at this windscreen it's actually a flat surface but in our design we've actually uh, bent the arms so that it gives a bit of contour so when the windscreen goes on the bike it's going to have a rounded front end that's going to help deflect wind a bit better so there was a lot of trial and error that went into designing the windshield because it's such a bulky piece we didn't know how we wanted to design it and shape it and secondly because it takes a 3d structure it took a lot of trial and error so to make sure that we got all the holes correctly aligned with the brackets on the tower. And another key aspect of this was the physical height of the windshield. This particular windshield is the smaller windshield. Uh, we also have another windshield which is about 7 centimeters taller and that windshield essentially blocks out all the wind, even the wind that hits your helmet. Another reason that Davin and I were going back and forth on the windshield size was the simple fact that Davin is a lot taller than I am. So the windshield that works for him ended up being a little bit excessive for me. So there was no one size that suited both of us. But it turned out that this size was a decent compromise for both of us. But moving forward, this is something that we want to customize so that we have a large shield and a short shield depending on the type of riding we do. In my case, I've also added a slight tint to the windshield. That's because I felt that the tint showed the windshield and gave it some shape as opposed to the completely transparent polycarp, which shows the entire tower behind it. But I like the tint because it not only gives it shape, but if you do want to look at the tower, you do see it to an extent. And the tint is light enough that as a rider, it doesn't obstruct my view of the obstacles that are directly ahead of me. So this vinyl is to show a bit of an outline around the headlights but at the same time it covers the wires between the two panels of the tower. Alright so with a bit of struggle I've got the uh, windshield on. I've also added a bit of vinyl to outline the headlight. Now, one other piece that's missing is the fender. So you don't need to take the fender off to fit the windshield, but it just made it a bit easier because you have a bit more space to move around. So I'll now put the fender on and when the fender comes on, we'll get a full picture of what the rally tower looks like. So if you haven't seen the video before, I've actually vinyl wrapped my whole bike. In fact, the safari tank has also been vinyl wrapped and that tank has been probably the most contentious part with the whole project. As you can see, there's a lot of petrol vapor bubbling up underneath the vinyl and I'm constantly looking at ways at improving it. So when I do have a solution for that, I'll let you guys know. So here we are now with the complete assembled rally tower. So firstly, you'll notice the nice curvature that we've got and that came from the bending of the polycarbonate. One of the biggest questions I had with the whole project was how strong and firm it would be. But taking a look at this now, it's on really tight and it has no vibrations whatsoever when the bike is running. Another tricky bit that I came across that you will also come across is how to hold all these wires together. So normally on the bike, the wires are held together under the headlight cowling. Now that we don't have the headlight cowling, the wires tend to hang around and dangle all over the place. So what we've done is actually fitted a little cradle under the speedometer just so that all the wires can be nicely tucked in together. So this works well and lets the handle turn without the wires rubbing against the rally tower itself. So another thing that you'll notice is that all the wires are concealed inside the tower. So that means you get a nice clean finish. At the same time, you'll notice that the dashboard is still empty. I've not wired any of the accessories. That takes me to my next point. Why I'm not going to be wiring right now. So this rally tower is just great. There's no two words about it. But at the same time, we learned a lot about what a tower should be like and what are the design elements we need to incorporate. So based on that, Davin and I are now working on a second version. It's a sleeker design and has much fewer components. So the assembly is going to be a lot easier. Plus the design has a lot more utility. So we have ironed out a lot of the little kinks we came across with this tower project. 
And another thing that we will be improving on the next version of the tower is the lighting. So Davin is a big fan of having everything really well lit. So he wants to have a much stronger headlight setup. So the next version will come with a more advanced ADR headlight setup that will just light up the whole night. So here's the best part about this rally tower. The part that involves you. If you are interested in setting up your bike with Rally Tower, you might not need to go through this whole design process by yourself. Throughout this whole design process, Davin and I had a lot of questions, a lot of inquiries and a lot of interest from riders who also want a rally kit. So we want to make some more rally towers for everyone. So you'll be able to get a rally tower that you just fit on your bike and ride away. First version is going to be for the DRZ, but there will be versions that fit other bikes in the future. So if you're interested in getting a rally tower, leave a comment or get in touch so that we can reach out to you when the time is right. So that pretty much wraps up this video. So let me know what do you think about this rally tower? What do you like about it? And what do you dislike about it? And how can I improve it? And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to On Two Wheels to find out the latest about my rally tower and other DIY projects that I get started on. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. That way you'll be the first to know when the next video is out. So once again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.